Hello and welcome everyone to our first class on syntax. I am Dr. Nimr Abu Salim. If you have any questions, you can email me at nimrabusalim at gmail.com, which is my first name and my last name. I'm sure everyone here is interested in learning about syntax. Let's go ahead and begin. So our e-lectures here will be based on Andrew Carney's Syntax, a Generative Introduction, the third edition, 2013. So most of our examples and the ideas presented here will be based on this book. This is an excellent book. I actually do recommend this book. So let's start. Now I always like to start my classes by locating where we are in the sciences and where we are in linguistics in particular. First off, let's take a look at this sentence here. Mary saw the man that was standing behind the moon. This looks like a very interesting sentence, but here's the most important thing we want to ask ourselves here. Have you ever heard this sentence before? Have you ever produced this sentence before? Most likely the answer is no. So then how were you able to produce a sentence like this? And how are you able to understand it? We need to talk a bit about language acquisition first. The first theory that explains how we acquire our native language is the behaviorism theory. Now the behaviorism theory basically states that we hear what our parents say and we imitate what they say. We repeat it. We are either reinforced or punished for saying something right or wrong. And at the end, we end up with the language. And as you can tell from our original sentence, Mary saw the man that was standing behind the moon. You probably never heard this sentence before, but you are still able to produce it and you are still able to understand it. So if you've never heard this sentence before, then how were we able to imitate it in the first place? Now we're not going to go into the details of language acquisition in this class, but as you can tell so far, behaviorism does lack the strong explanatory power that we're looking for. The next theory was the innateness theory. Noam Chomsky is the leading figure in the innateness theory. And basically this theory suggests that we do not imitate or copy what our parents say. Actually, we just listen for input of our language. This input is filtered inside our brain in a device called the language acquisition device, or LAD for short. Then we come out with the output, which is our language. Now inside this language acquisition device is something we call universal grammar, along with strategies for acquiring languages. Let's leave that aside for now. So universal grammar, sometimes we call this UG for short. What is UG? And why is this important for language acquisition? So universal grammar, or UG, is the set of rules that are innate. So we are born with these rules, according to the innateness theory. And these rules are for all human languages. So basically, let's take just one very simple aspect of these rules. Let's say, for example, word order. So in English, it's subject and then verb and then object. In Arabic, it's verb, subject, object. How do we get these orders correct? According to the innateness theory, inside the language acquisition device, there is the universal grammar. This universal grammar has a lot of rules. Among them, one rule would be the word order rules or actually parameters sometimes we call them so let's just take this under this you can imagine that there are all the possibly human word orders that we can use for language so you can have s v o listed or v s o listed and so on and so forth you're not going to get anything in this list that is not part of the human language capacity so all you really have to hear is just some very slight input Probably a few sentences will do. From these few sentences, you can pick and choose which one, which one best fits your language. So if it's this one, then the output will be that all of the sentences you produce will be in SVO order. Therefore, you do not need to hear all of the sentences of the language to be able to produce 
a sentence with the SVO order. Everything is just generated out of this algorithm, you could say. This is the basis for generative linguistics. And in fact, the type of syntax we are discussing in this class is generative syntax. You also notice that we were talking about some rules or principles and that the idea was that we set the correct parameters, either SVO or VSO. So under generative syntax, we are mainly dealing with the principles and parameters approach. So that's where we are under syntax. So great, now since we're talking about grammars, it would be very interesting if we can actually explain or describe that grammar that a native speaker has in his mind. What rules or principles does this native speaker have in his or her mind? When creating a grammar, there are three different strengths to a grammar that we can create. The grammar we create can be observationally adequate, meaning that it accounts for the observations that we see in the data. Next up, we have a more stronger grammar, which is a descriptively adequate grammar. This one not only accounts for the observations in the data, but also the accept acceptability judgments of native speakers. At the end, it helps us come up with generalizations. The most powerful kind of grammar is the explanatorily adequate grammar. This type of grammar accounts for observations, acceptability judgments, it creates generalizations, but furthermore, it explains language acquisition. So then, observationally adequate, descriptively adequate, and explanatorily adequate. Our goal, of course, would be to create an explanatorily adequate grammar. Now, we said that this grammar here was supposed to explain to us the rules or the principles that underlie the knowledge of a native speaker about his or her language. But these rules are called descriptive rules. You need to know the difference now between a descriptive rule and a prescriptive rule. A prescriptive rule would be a rule that tells you how you should speak. So a rule that says that it is incorrect, and this sign means incorrect or ungrammatical, that is incorrect to say, can I go to the bathroom when you're in class, for example. A prescriptive grammar would say that this is wrong, and what you should say is, may I go to the bathroom. The fact of the matter is that we always, or most of the time, say, can I go to the bathroom? The teacher understood what you said, and everyone else did as well. And what you meant by this was, may I go to the bathroom? So why are we always stuck using this one, or teaching students to use, may I go to the bathroom, when in real life, people very rarely say that? A descriptive grammar producing descriptive rules, describes how people actually use the language, how they speak, okay? Therefore, the type of rules or grammars that we are interested in is the descriptive rules for our purposes here, because we want to describe the rules that exist in the mind of the native speaker. The native speaker does not have in his brain a grammar book. The native speaker has his own sets of rules. That they have acquired as a native language. These are the sets of rules that we are interested in and want to describe. Okay, so we've been talking about rules for a while now. Rules this, rules that. Where do these rules come from? Well, syntax is the scientific study of form or structure of human language. What do we mean by that? In any sentence, even in this sentence above, the sentence is created from different parts. So, for example, you have individual sounds. These sounds are made up together to form morphemes. These morphemes are built up together to create words. Words are mixed together to create phrases. And phrases together to create sentences. So, this is how language can basically be broken down. This is what we call the language faculty. The language faculty looks at three different parts the sound, the form, and the meaning. Under sound, you want to study the sounds of the language, and so you go into the branches of linguistics, which are phonetics and 
phonology. Under form, you could either look at the word form or the structure of sentences. If you're looking at the word form, then you're looking at the branch of linguistics called morphology. If you're looking at the structure of sentences, then you're dealing with syntax. Meaning is studied by the branches of semantics and pragmatics. So this shows you where we fall in the whole paradigm of the language faculty or in the study of linguistics. So that's that for our first lecture. Stay tuned for our next lecture where we're going to talk about these rules in more detail. See you there.